Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for wearing my shirt. Yeah. Uh, much appreciated. But anyways, uh, in this map, now Mech Depot, mm -hmm. even though if you look at the size of the gas and the minerals, you kind of get the idea of how big the map is. Now, mm -hmm. despite seemingly small, Mech Depot is actually one of the maps where it takes quite a bit of while to get to the enemy base. Mm -hmm. Now, usually with most short distance maps, it's around like 40 to 43 seconds. Mm -hmm. With Mech Depot, however, that distance is extended to 50 seconds. Now, that is quite huge, and right. because of that, a lot of Zerg players tend to go for a macro favored uh, approach in this mm -hmm. matchup, in this map. Yeah, so when you're saying macro, I know uh, you've talked a lot about in ZVZ um, macro build, there being like a lot of uh, Roach Burrow movement stuff. At mm -hmm. least. Uh, would you like to tell us a little more about that before we introduce these players? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> actually, it seems like a pretty big topic, uh, so... Mm -hmm. Let's introduce first, then. It be, yeah, there we go. Alright, uh, well, here on the bottom left-hand side, I used to train with this guy. He is our pink Zergy McFerguson for Psystorm Gaming. It's the 20 kid having warrant. Spawning the bottom right, I mean, <laughs> sorry, but the top right is from Nocturnal Gamers, Rogue. Yes, Not sir. to be confused with Rogue of Korea. Yeah, apparently we've been saying Nocturnal Gamers, Nocturnal Dreamers. It's been a long, confusing day, guys. We've had we've had a lot of issues. It's Nocturnal Gamers versus Psystorm Gaming. Right. <laughs> um, originally, uh, Eternal Gamers uh, didn't show up, right? Eternal Dreamers, was it? Right, Eternal Dreamers oh. and then Nocturnal Gamers who were eliminated during the elimination round actually right. got revived as per the rules um, just because Let's face it, esports people are not always the most reliable, so we kind of build in right. some, some systems to help us make sure we always have a show. And I want to say that these Nocturnal Gamers, they've been waiting uh, last Saturday as well, and they've been waiting uh, being on the backup like all mm -hmm. this time. So I think if anybody deserves a chance, they definitely do. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Nocturnal Gamers trying to go ahead and take a third base, but Warren already in position to uh, to repel that. Some Lings coming into the field, and it's going to allow Rogue to possibly get this drone set up, but just buying a lot right. of time. Uh, something I want to talk about is the opening build order, and that's definitely important, especially in CVC. Both mm -hmm. players have started with the 17 hatch, 17 gas, mm -hmm. and 17 pool, which mm -hmm. is... Definitely, kind of, uh, I must say, what I expected for a Mech Depot game, considering mm -hmm. the long distance uh, it takes to right. travel. And with just two pair of links being mm -hmm. made on both sides, like, they didn't even pull up links, so they were definitely eliminating the possibility of an early attack in this game. So definitely, we can see and expect a macro game here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and just to, oh. yeah. Oh, I was about uh, just to, to add, take a... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, it is casting together is a bit difficult when, when we're not here together and like yes, physically. Yes, yes. I would yeah. like to hold your hand, man. <laughs> Definitely, likewise. But anyways, uh, usually in ZBZ, for a third base, you want to get your third hatch at the mm -hmm. 4-minute. That is considered the safe timing. That's when you have your banelings, uh, safety bailing nest, mm -hmm. and that's when you have some idea of how the opposition is going to play out. But these players have both started their base at like 3 minutes to 3 minutes and 20 seconds, so that's great. Yeah, and we've got some Banelings here zoning away Rogue's uh, Lings, but the Rocha is going to catch him a little bit off guard, takes out the Banelings immediately, and Rogue taking a slight advantage here with about yeah, 35, 25 supply more. Uh, right, so what happened is that if you can skip the Baneling Nest, you can mm -hmm. go immediately for a Roach. Now, it, because these uh, Roaches don't have the Lair Tech, so they won't be having Roach speed, Right. So it's going to take some while, but considering how open the third base is in Mech Depot, mm -hmm. it's going to be a dangerous assault. So this is basically just going to reset the third base, force it to be rebuilt. It's not going to be like a kill blow straight into the natural. Right, but considering how two spine crawlers are being made in Warren's base, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that if Rogue plays it safe and doesn't go for a, mm -hmm. a killing blow, then I think Rogue should definitely have the advantage right here. Yeah, this is this is not the right move, I think, here by Rogue. But he does have yeah. Ravagers, we'll see how he can make happen here. He pulls off one of these spine crawlers, boom, there it goes. Roaches uh, take two Banelings to the pitch, don't know how effective that is. They are very pumped up, and really good Ravager shots taking out some of the coons and hurting a 
lot. A uh, little bit of the jump if you're not very careful. You can pull off the line and try and get a uh, This is a very dangerous attack. I'm actually quite surprised that this works. Uh, drones are being pulled even though the rookies don't have speed, but the reinforcements are coming and this has done so much damage already. Dude, so this is a killing blow straight to the face, man. We did not see it coming, but this is actually some really brilliant play here by Rogue. We underestimated them. Definitely. I'm really digging Rogue's timing here, and especially how he skipped the ability bangling this with the correct assessment of how the map is supposed to be played out. And definitely for those Zerg players out there, I really recommend you guys trying this build once and at least once in Mech Depot because this is looking real solid. Yeah, this is really solid, but some Roach is coming out here for war. Oh, but these stuff. Ravagers, you cannot afford to lose Ravagers. They cost so much in this early game. Yep. And, and wow, Roach actually, GG. Wow. Okay, so. We went from thinking that was a really bad play to a brilliant play, right. maybe not the best play, or was there something bad with the fall? What, what exactly happened there? What? Why did Rogue tap out? Like, he's only six workers behind. Well, they, I'm still quite confused as to uh -huh. why the outcome of the match was like that. But it seemed uh -huh. like... Um, as there was no damage done, I think he assessed for himself that uh, mm -hmm. this wouldn't be much of a chance. And there might also be a possibility that, that I'm just not might be good enough based on what he has seen before. So uh, that could right. also possibly be it. But I think, frankly, that was a bit of an early GG. Like, that, that was too much of an early GG. What do you say? Yeah, I feel like Warren taught us all a lesson in that first ZVZ we did where never give up. Never surrender. Right, right. Definitely. Yeah, so, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe it's different philosophies looking at the game. We will see Warren taking his second game so far. And that should put up Psystorm Gaming 3-1. We'll see uh, if this is going to be game point and uh, how this continues. Anyways, guys, just to give you a little bit of a rundown, this is a round-robin format event. So, at this stage, each match actually matters. So... At this point, we will record like the, all the wins for each team and all the losses for each team. Um, right now, it's at 3-1, so um, Psystorm has three, um, Nocturnal Gamers has one. That means those two are subtracted, so Psystorm game, like at the en end of the round robin. So it's going to be wins versus losses, and whoever's got the highest score going out of the round robin event will go into the main event where we'll be having uh, either one or two best of sevens, depending on how things work out with the seeds. But if you want more information on that, we will be happy to provide you that in the chat. In the meantime, we're going to be taking a quick word from our sponsors. Take it away, Felipe. That, that's right, Shaft. We're going to be getting into a quick commercial break. But remember to go and check out some of those sponsors like Crave Beef Jerky. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.